All right, thanks. We'll, we'll kick off then. So obviously everyone knows who, um, who Adam and I are. Um, we, we set this up, uh, if you remember, we did one pre-season. Anybody's here pre-season? You, you heard all the sort of targets we had for the, for the year and what was going on off the pitch as well as on the pitch. So we thought, actually, it's a good time now. We're halfway through the season, just about halfway in terms of league games, um, to do another period of reflection and, and some commentary. Um, and share with you what's going on off the pitch, what's going on on the pitch. I'm sure all the questions are going to be to Adam about on the pitch, but I'll take uh, any question about anything that's to do with the whole club. Um, and as I've said in the past, uh, there's nothing that's, that's off limits. I think the only sensitive subject will be the legalities around the pitch, um, but I'll happily talk about the pitch, but there'll be certain things that I can't say quite clearly because that's still an ongoing issue, but anything else about the pitch I can clearly talk about. Um, so we'll do some reflections, give some, some commentary um, and just help with your understanding so that you understand more about what's happening with the club and it's not actually just about you know, losing a couple of games, there's so much more to it than that. Um, but it helps Adam and I just understand as well and stay in tune with what is on people's minds and what's working, what's not working um, for you folks. So I thought in terms of process, uh, I'll just share some uh, thoughts for uh, five minutes or so. Um, I'll talk about off the pitch and on the pitch. Uh, I'll talk about you know what we're really pleased about, or certainly what I'm really pleased about, um, and what I'm not pleased about, what's you know not really going particularly well um, off and on the pitch. Um, so I'll, I'll share my thoughts on that, and then just tell you what's really on our uh, list of things to tackle for the next three, four, five months um, uh, in terms of again off the pitch and on the pitch uh, that we need to get right uh, ready for the summer. Um, and I might even share with you the dirty question that Adam asked me last Sunday. Um, so you asked me quite a dirty question. Give me an honest answer, if he remembers it. Hurt you, was it? <laughs> Apologies that there's no players here, but that's my fault. There's a bit of a sickness bug going around at the minute, so... But you do get a chance to ask some questions every week, pretty much. So. Yeah. <coughs> I can phone anyone anyway, if there's an important one. I'll phone him They'll be more than willing to answer. And Adam's fighting the onset of flu as well, so... You know, he's yeah, dragging himself yeah. out. Yeah. Man flu. Deadly. You know how bad man flu is. Um, so just in terms of the last... Um, going back to August, sort of stepping back what's happened since, since last August, off the pitch and on the pitch, um, the kind of things that have gone well and, 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 and not gone so well. So just starting with the people involved in the club, we've got so many more people now um, involved with the club on a volunteer basis. We've got a leadership team in place that, that I'm pretty pleased with now. Um, all of our key positions are covered off. Um, we've got um, more uh, qualified and capable paid staff involved we've got you know amber has rejoined the club we've got Louis now taking on um, a new role within the club we've got people that have come back into the fold we've got gareth who's now much more heavily involved um, we've got people uh, maintaining our pitch uh, um, mick martin if you know mick who again you know used to be involved and, and, and for various reasons drifted away uh, and have come back in so the the leadership and the volunteer force um, and the army of people that are now supporting um, the club is way beyond anything that um, uh, that it was like at the start of the season. So Brian's coming, and um, you know, just sort of looking across to my left, uh, you know, with people like Amanda um, who who bring in ideas to the table about, you know, we should have a shop, we should have a shop, Pete. Yeah, we should, Amanda. You're absolutely right. We should. We stop. Um, we stop. And um, and it. Hi Brian, we've only just started, come on in. And, um, and, and it, for various reasons it took way longer than it should have done to get um, a shop established. Uh, and for a club of this size and this stature, sitting where we're doing in the town of this size, to not have a shop is just absolutely criminal. Um, but all that aside, we got there in the end, didn't we? And we got it going and, and it's really thanks to the dedication of Amanda, uh, who's more recently been assisted by Mark, that we have a great shop, you know, a thriving shop um, that is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and it presents more challenge now in terms of we've got to find a more permanent home for it as opposed to sticking yeah, it. Yeah, that's somewhere warm and dry yeah, please. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Um, but that, you know, aside from the leadership team who take on all the accountability for the running of the club, it, it really is people like Amanda and the, and the sort of volunteer army that are running the turnstiles, that are running um, some of the day-to-day op -day operations around the secretarial work on a match day. That's what keeps us going. Um, and, and one of my ambitions was to have that structure in place and still have more of it because it's, if we're going to keep growing and if we want 
Adam to take the club forward in terms of the first team we want the other teams to progress we absolutely have to have that working in the background like a machine um, and we've gone a long way to do to do that so I'm, I'm really chuffed with the sort of volunteer force and the leadership um, around the club I think the crowd speak for themselves I mean, pretty much everybody here I recognise coming on a match day um, and we have the highest average for a step three club in the UK um, the only one that gets close to a step three is Scarborough Athletic in the Northern League if you, if you pay attention to any of the league stats um, and twice this year we've had the um, I think three times actually we've had the highest uh, of any step three club in the whole country the crowd the other week against Bognor was the eighth highest outside the football league um, our average has been a thousand and four we only budgeted for 800 um, we dropped down to 759 I think it was the, the thing cut out didn't it the time I cut out on the announcement last week so our crowds are absolutely fantastic and they're rising and rising and rising and you know what we get knocks left right and centre from other clubs for being focused on crowd size and by, by um, you know, um, by judging ourselves and crowing about how big our crowds are. And we get knocked all over the place. If you, if you look on social media, you'll see it. We have Lewis, Burgess Hill, Bognor, they're all having a pop and other clubs having a pop as well. And, um, and I say, so what? I absolutely do not care. Because it's, it's a sign that we're doing things right in the community and around the town. And, and I, I've always said, big club, big town, simple as that. So the more people we're drawing in, then we're doing a lot of things right. I, I, we, we're not going to ultimately judge the success of the club by how big the crowd is to the neglect of any of our playing teams quite clearly we're a football club but that is a great indicator that we're doing something right around uh, engaging with our town so that it does bring in a whole raft of problems which I'll, I'll come to in a second so getting the crowds um, up but I think the feeling around the ground on a match day is pretty good as well and we get a lot of feedback around the mood and the atmosphere. We've had a couple of unsavoury moments, but I think the, the stewards at Bognor did a great job in um, uh, frisking people. Um, there were a couple of side issues that it raised, but you know we nailed six smoke bombs were confiscated. We, we confiscated a ton of bottles of beer that shouldn't be allowed in the ground. So as the crowds get bigger, it does bring some of those kind of challenges where we have to step up and we have to put in place certain things. But you know what? You want to be a big club with big crowds. You've got to you've got to be prepared for some of that. Um, I think that whole engagement around the town. Again, I, I we had these volunteers who've been um, giving the posters out every month with the fixtures on. And it used to be people would would say, "Oh, we've got to get fixtures in town. It's ridiculous. I walk around the town. I can't see any fixtures." I'm now getting people um, knocking on the door and, and bending my ear to say. I was in Rustington, I was in Ferrin, I was in Little Hampton, and I didn't see any posters about Worthing. We've got to get more posters. And you think, do you know what? If, we, if we're getting further and further afield, then I'll take that all day long. Uh, and when somebody says I couldn't see any posters in Bognor, then we know we've nailed it. But, <laughs> but the very fact that people are saying we've got to get our posters further and further and further, rather than just around this area, I think is again great testament to uh, what we're doing with engaging folks. Um, and the, the sort of social media content, particularly in the last six <coughs> weeks, um, since, um, since Lewis ramped up the activity around the Q&As and the, um, the pre and post match interviews and the, the two by two um, challenges, again, the feedback on that has been fantastic. So we're trying to do so much to engage with the broader community uh, and to give it the feel of a club that people want to be part of and people want to support. So I think that's been great. The merchandising, I think I've already mentioned. So loads of things in terms of off the pitch that have been um, you know, real, real positives. W where am I frustrated? Where do I think there's things that I ah, just wish we could do a little bit more than that? Um, our facilities are now becoming a problem. They're creaking at the seams, you know, toilets. I get my ear bent every week now in the home game. Um, I have to throw people out of the ladies' toilet. They have a go at me saying, well, it's not fair because they're sat there. But if you're a lady and you want to use it and there's two blokes in there, you wouldn't be very happy, would you? Um, so our facilities are creaking. That create that, and it's the toilets mainly that, that causes complaints. Um, you know, we, we now have to put extra provisions in for bars and for food just to cater with the sort of crowds we get. You know, Amanda wants a permanent home. We've got various buildings that have got leaking roofs. So there's lots of things around the facilities that um, we have to start doing more with. And, and if we do one day get into National South, there's more we have to do with the ground as well. Not a huge amount, but there's a few bits and pieces that we, we have to do. So facilities are becoming a, um, are becoming a, a bit of a challenge. Um, I mentioned the community, the work that we've been doing with the community and, and things like the mascots. You know, every week now we have mascots leading the team out and they're all drawn from local youth teams. And I just said to Aaron earlier, I, I now cannot 
uh, I and we as a club, we cannot keep up with the demand um, for more community engagement that's, that's coming to us. I get, and we're letting people down, and that, that really pains me, where um, people have written and said, you know, could you, would you come and do a coaching session for our school? Would you come and do a coaching session for our kids? Or um, uh, my son plays for a disabled team, could you come and do a coaching session for them? And we, we've got like a backlog of that. And so as we become more popular, the demand has become greater and we can't quite keep up with the demand. So we've got to make a couple of adjustments to make sure we can keep up with that. Because if we start making promises we can't keep, people start walking away. So that keeping up with that demand has been a challenge. Uh, fundraising. Um, we started this, the year with some grand ambitions to raise more funds. Things like lotteries, things like golf days, things like um, um, charity football matches for our... Um, and we haven't done any of that. We've just been so distracted by so many things, we just haven't got any of that off the ground. Um, so we have to do more around um, fundraising. And again, when you look at the big clubs, they all do fundraising. They all do these kind of things. So if we want to match ourselves to that and, and help not just Adam, but the ladies team and the academy and the youth teams, we have to do um, much more around the fundraising side. Um, administratively, I've got to say, I think we are pretty weak in certain parts of the way the club is run. I don't know what other clubs get fined, but we are forever getting fined. Um, and it could be 50 quid here. And some of it, I'll be honest, it drives you mad. It's a license to print money by some of the leagues and the authorities. Um, you know, we, we, could, we took a league handbook from an open, uh, an AGM, sorry, and it was a three quid handbook. We tried to pay in cash, we couldn't pay in cash. They say, no, we'll invoice you. Got paying cash, no, we'll invoice you. The invoice came in, but it was missed, and we got fined 50 quid for a three pound handbook. Um, you know, so things like that. Um, so they didn't pay the cash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. It, you're absolutely right, John. Some of these, I'm sure they exist <laughs> make money for themselves. I reckon since the start of the season, we've shelled out about two and a half grand in fines. Um, and some of it is our own fault because we've missed things. You know, we failed to return forms, we haven't signed this properly, or we've missed that, or there's a whole range of stuff. But you know, two and a half grand in fines is two and a half grand we shouldn't be shipping out. And that's just where, as we've got bigger and we've now got more teams in place, some of the things have just fallen down the cracks, but um, they're, getting, they're getting easier every week and every month. So, <coughs> some of that. Um, and I saw Barry wandering somewhere, it's Barry on the top right. Um, Barry will tell you that he spends 95% of his non-working life focused on our pitch issue. So, I will just touch on that. Um, the, the, there is an ongoing dispute around the pitch, as you all know. And that is um, in the hands of um, FIFA, who have been phenomenally good in supporting our cause. Um, the, all the parties involved have come to an agreement that an independent civil engineer will be appointed who will examine the subsurface below the carpet and find out once and for all, is that subsurface dynamic? Is it unstable? And if it is, is that what's causing the pitch to, be losing, uh, to lose its levels when it gets tested? We say it is, FIFA say it is, the third party experts <coughs> all say it is. We, we say it is only because of what third party experts say. Um, but the carpet supplier and the contractor say it isn't. So that has to be, that has to be resolved, otherwise we'll, um, we'll never get the pitch that we paid for. Um, well, nothing more concerned that is a barrier really, other than it's an ongoing. Yeah, I think we'll be running tests in the, uh, once the season's over. Yeah. Uh, so we can get into the pitch and actually get under the surface. But yeah. uh, at least the main thing was we've got, we've got the club playing back here in the short term, yeah. whilst we fix the longer term problem. Actually, that's a good point, yeah, because the last time we sat here, we weren't quite sure, but we were. I think we gave the message, we were very positive and quite relaxed about the outcome. So we did get the club back here and playing. Um, and the, the two parties that we're in dispute with um, they have been removed from the FIFA lists, which, which prevents them from um, uh, using the FIFA branding for football pitch construction. Uh, so it's hurting them commercially, so it's in their interest to get their matter resolved to the satisfaction of FIFA. So um, that's kind of ongoing. Just off the, uh, on the pitch, so I'll just touch on a few things on the pitch. Um, we have launched the academy and the youth. So the academy is the education program, so we've got um, a bunch of boys in there now who have the feedback has been they are model pupils they um, the tutors um, and the education providers have said there is no uh, program like it anywhere in the south where people are so committed um, with the facilities that they've got um, the quality of the boys the values and the behavior everything around that has been kind of a model uh, and in terms of their playing side i think their play 10 
one nine drawn one, something like that. Right, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, and these are sixteen year olds playing in an under nineteen league, by the way. Um, and so that's a that's a great start right, in terms of the, where we go next with that. We're looking to enrol next year's academy as soon as we possibly can. So the dream is that we have two years of an academy running. Um, so you know, two dozen plus um, thirty plus um, boys operating, and we've launched the youth teams. We've got sixteens, fifteens, and fourteens all now playing under the badge, which we've never had in the past. Um, so you end of Sunday, you probably see one, at least one, if not two of them playing down here. Um, and I think mixed results, Steve, you probably say amongst them, but. It's early stages, they're progressing, and if you ever come to watch them, you'll see, even at the four teams, um, as well as all the three teams, you'll see the patterns of play that are the same as the first team. Um, so it's, a, it's been a huge achievement, I think, to get everybody trialled and get them together and get them playing in a way that Adam wants the first team playing. And that's the same for the academy as well. Uh, it really is a joy to watch if you haven't been to seeing it and play. Uh, I'll let Adam talk more about the first team, I'm sure you've got lots to ask him about the first team, but just wanted to reiterate our target for this season was to be competitive throughout the whole season and to see young players coming through as the future for the club. Um, and, and yes, as a fan, I would love to win the league, I clearly would. Um, but as the, so the chairman of the club, I want us to just remain competitive, be in that mix, be progressing from last year quite demonstrably. And you know, and we talk long and hard about this. We do not want to be a club that's built around loan players. It's built around non-contract players. It's built around older players that are kind of bit part. We want a first team, in particular, that's built around younger regional talent that's locked in and contracted to this club for the longer term. And we've got, uh, I think we've got eight of our first team squad, or nine, are on contracts with us. Average age for the last four games, five games, has been under 21. Um, and that's unique in, uh, in our division, to have so many younger players who are tied into the club and we've got more conversations um, to get underway, to lock even more of them in. So we, we will not stop in pursuit of being, from a first team perspective, a club that is built around regional talent. Um, we'll have to supplement it occasionally, clearly, um, but we'll keep, we'll, keep that, um, we'll keep that going. In terms of what's not working, there's a couple of things that, that are not working. Um, really the, the ladies is probably my biggest disappointment, not from a performance perspective, but because we failed to integrate them into the club. Um, you know, we had a new manager and it, and it just didn't work. Um, Hannah is making a huge difference for those who know Hannah, those who have come up to the ladies. So she was a player, she stepped up to become player manager um, and that's going much better. But in terms of overall club, um, on the pitch, great, but ladies have been a bit isolated and we have to get them back in. We have to be as um, uh, as keen and passionate about our ladies football as we are about our youth and our academy and, and obviously the first team. Um, and the injuries have been a, on the pitch, have been a nightmare. Um, every club has its injuries but I think the biggest frustration for, for me as a club is we don't know how to deal with it. We don't know how to help you know, Aaron or Alfie or uh, Lucas is pretty straightforward because it's just a clean break. Um, but you know, with, with my David with his when he was at Bedford Town, that particular injury he got there, and Ollie when we're here with the, I think it was the Burnley Seal game, and so on. It's the frustration of we get the injuries and we don't know how to deal with it in the best possible way, um, and, and kind of everybody's going off and doing their own thing and trying to find their own <coughs> solutions. And, and I think as a big club, if we want to feel like and be a big club, then we have to have a solution for that, um, and um, which which we've now got. Um, so lots of things going very well on the pitch and a couple of things that are sort of niggling. Um, and then just to close out, the next five months, four months, what's on the agenda for things to focus on. Um, we've got to tighten up our day to day admin, we can't be having any more fines, it's just, it's just irritating when there's another fine, another 80 quid, another 90 quid, another 150 quid, another 200 quid. We've got to cut those out. We've got a plan for the upgrade of our facilities, uh, we've got lots of ideas, we've got to turn that into a plan that we can finance and that we can fund. We have to do some fundraising, we've got to raise more money. Um, uh, and there's a couple of big sponsorship opportunities that will come up as well. So the stadium naming rights, that, that contract ends in uh, May. Uh, so we'll be looking for a new sponsor of the stadium. Um, we'll be looking to re-engage Rabbit again on the kit. So there's a number of big things like that that we need to get um, closed out properly to set us up for next season. Uh, in terms of on the pitch, um, we're going to be looking to expand the academy side so that we get another intake 
come uh, August next year. Uh, so we, we can at least double the numbers in our academy. Uh, we'll explore ideas about how we can expand um, the youth setup further. Uh, we, uh, we have now um, got a person who is uh, who will be our, I don't know what the exact title will be, but you get the flavour, it's like Director of Medical Science on Medical Services. Um, it's an individual who held exactly that role at a Premiership Club. Uh, they're from this uh, local area. Um, and um, I did refer Aaron um, and Lucas to see um, one or two of these kind of individuals. These are all top uh, consultant you know, orthopaedics and radiographers and that kind of thing. So it's really given us a focal point um, to help people like Natalie from a first team perspective, to help Aaron, to help me, to help Adam, so that we've got one collective expert view that can direct everybody in terms of the best course of action when we've got concerns about fitness or injuries or conditioning. And we're not all left, you know, me saying to Adam, when's so and so going to be available and what's happening with this? And he says, can I, they're telling me this. And that. so we get all that wrapped up together. So again, if we're going to think and be like a big club, then we've got to have some of these things in place. And that's a volunteer that's going to be helping us. We've got to integrate the ladies um, and we've got to keep the first team remaining competitive um, and um, keeping on track for what we wanted, which was for a competitive season where we got more youth team playing. And some of the youth players, as I'm sure you know, have been, not youth, the younger players have been absolute stars this year. Um, that was enough for me, that's all I wanted to, sort of just to skirt around everything that's happening in and around the whole club. Um, we'll take questions, I guess, won't we? Yeah, that's what I said. Um, I've got nothing really to, that kind of detail, obviously just really proud and honoured to, to be manager of this football club. It's, uh, Got a dream job, love my job. Um, that's not just working on the first team, 14s, 15s, 16s, uh, the education program. Um, you know, full time here working with some of the best local talent and the best talent in Sussex, in my opinion, ranging from under 14 all the way through to um, 20, 21 year olds. Um, I think we've got some of the best under 24 players in the area um, and really quite proud to watch them out there and perform on a, on a regular basis uh, so you know, I've got nothing really I take questions by all means but um, nothing to add I'm, I mean I'm not going to hide behind our current form and stuff like that and say it's all down to injured players I think that's wrong I think that's disrespectful to the players that we've got out playing um, I think they're more than good enough um, I've got to take a bit of responsibility but in terms of being competitive, I would say most of them second half and 25 minutes at Eastbourne Town was totally unacceptable. Other than that, I would say, you know, been quite proud with the way we've performed. Yeah, you did a brilliant job. Balanced a lot of games, a lot of games to get through injuries, not out of um, Just supposed to get the ball rolling with the question then. So, Zach and Reese have now moved on. Anyone else looking to come in on loan or? Uh, yeah, just just with them, like we're quite strategic with the loan players that I look to try and bring in. Like Zach and Reese, I think are could be potential signings in the future. Um, obviously, they want to, you know, they're playing uh, league and two leagues above uh, currently with their parent clubs. But um, if things don't work out there, they're the kind of players and personnel that we want to bring to this club. They, you know, both attached to the club now. Um, in the spell that they've been here. Um, so that's that's the sort of reasoning behind them. They both come back to their parent clubs, and rightly so, they want to keep them there and have a look at them in the next week or so. So we just keep monitoring that, and yes, um, like I say, I'm really happy with the, the the quality that we've got within the group. And there's a couple of our 16 year olds that are chomping at the bit to get a bit of action and a bit of game time. So yeah, I think it's like testament to yourself and the coaching you do that they wanted to come back. We obviously we appreciate what you do at Worthing, so all the fans are behind you and hopefully we can push on in 2019. Um, Jasper, big yeah, favourite of ours. Definitely. He's, he's, a, a, in and around the squad he's one of players. many exciting talents that we've got and I'll probably, you know, hold him back by the reins because he's desperate to go out and show you guys yeah. what he can do, um, you know, on the big, big stage if you like uh, for him. Um, but yeah, he's got to manage that one. Right, um, I think it'd be very easy just to chuck him straight in. Um, you know, in the current sort of climate with the um, results, I think it might be the wrong time to go and put a little bit of 
pressure on a 16 year old so just got to manage it right but he's he's one of many talented boys that we've got like so the average age has been 21 I think that can get lost sometimes um, you know because we've got an unbelievable fan base everyone looks at us and associates us with Billericke and Dulwich and you know we're not we're not at that kind of level in terms of a playing budget and, and stuff like that just not there there's loads to be done around the ground we want to try and do things properly at this club and um, we'd be wrong to do that and put it all into a playing budget if we're not able to do that. So, you know, we want to stick to our DNA and our, yeah, we want to stick to our DNA, our beliefs um, and what we believe in is giving these young players an opportunity and hopefully, like, there's no high net, we've lost a player to a Premier League club already. There's been another lad that's been on trial at a Premier League club. Um, we've had championship clubs that have taking our players on trial, uh, League One clubs, um, you know, so if, if we're the bedding for these players to, to, to get looked at and get seen, um, then I think it bodes well for us. For yeah, it does, but like I say, we are ambitious and we want them to, we want these young players to stay here and be part of what we want to try and achieve as well, because you look at the likes of Ricky, Clarkey, Danny Barker, Badger Boy, you know, imagine them in two, three, four years time and you know, same with myself, I'm young, I'm learning all the time and so are they. So we're not gonna get it right every week and unfortunately that's part and parcel of, of where we are at this stage as a club. Doing a brilliant job to keep it up. That's all for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks for training>. <laughs> <laughs> just on the Zach thing, I'm sorry about that. Just just to for those who didn't know, um it, it Zach didn't go back we didn't let him go for footballing reasons. They wanted a fee. And you know, we had the conversation and said, look, we're not really in a position to give Welling United a fee. But they demanded money for it for him, as well as his obviously his weekly wage. So they wanted a full transfer fee. And we said, No. Nah, we're not in a position to do it. And when we've got a pipeline of youth, if it hurts us in the short term, then we have to bite that bullet because we've got people that come through. It might not be right now, but you know, people like Jaspers, for example. Um, but when people start demanding money from us, and there's a little bit of that going on because people seem to think we are a Billy Ricky and a Dulwich and we've got money coming out of our ears, and, and it's just not true. So we're trying to balance everything out. Um, and if it takes a little bit longer, it takes a bit longer. But <coughs> if we're still here in 10 years doing the right things, that's got to be a good sign. Amanda, sorry. Do you think our oh, round is going to cope with the way you're managing us? You're saying that we have got the right facilities and what have you? Um, as it's, well, as it's two, two answers to that. If we did ever get promoted to National South, no it won't because it doesn't meet the criteria for a Grade B ground. And it, it falls on about three key elements, um, which they're not big deals, if I'm entirely honest. Um, what are they? What they, are they? Uh, so the, we have to, in no particular order, we have to have a separate facility should there be a spectator medical incident which basically means if anybody has an incident out here as a spectator, they can't go into the boardroom. So like, class week is a classic example, a lady got hit by the Ooh, ball behind the goal. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, and had to go in the boardroom, that's not allowed. Um, nor can you put them in the changing room, nor can you put them into the medical room or the referee's room. There has to be a separate facility. We don't have that. So that's one thing we've got to put in place. Um, is that as us now? No, that's if we were to be promoted. I was going to say, because I know I took the person into yeah. the boardroom. No, that's a, that's a great, we're a grade C. Um, to give you some levelling, so Lansing at the Sussex FA headquarters is a grade uh, D. So last year we tried to see if we could ground share with them when we were off the pitch, but we couldn't because they don't meet the ground criteria for level C. We are a C. Um, so the spectator facility is one. The second and probably the biggest is you have to have the ability to segregate fans at point of entry um, and to segregate them in the ground. You don't have to segregate and you don't have to put them in a separate, basically in separate turnstiles, right? Um, it's only in the National League that you have to segregate. In National South and North, or for Grade B, sorry, you have to have the ability to segregate at entry and during the game. Um, and what goes with that is you have to therefore have separate toilet and refreshment facilities. So right now, we, we, it, it, we can't say, if you look at our three turnstiles, right, turnstiles one and two are for home fans, three for away, you, that's not good enough. Um, so the, the long-term vision we've got as a solution to that problem is that far uh, northeastern corner, there's an alleyway there that goes back out onto Woodside Road. All we'll do is open that back up again, um, cut back all the shrubbery, install a turnstile. Um, that's pretty straightforward to do. That gives you the separate entry point for away fans, so that's okay. 
Um, and then we'd probably look to rejuvenate that corner with toilets and the refreshment block. And that's then an area that we could use for away fans to segregate if we so needed to. Um, uh, so that's all pretty straightforward then for the from the grade B perspective. Um, uh, if we then you to answer come up the other part of the question, which is you know could we could we cope? Um, no. We, as many as the one we had in here at Bogda, Yeah, we can't. It was. We can't. You know, no, we can't. Remotely. No, there's a there's a bunch of things what that. Is, sorry, what is our capacity? Uh, we're limited to about two and a half thousand, um, and that's to do with the entry and exit points. So we've only got those single points of entry and exit, as you know. Um, but if we were to open up that corner, and the other idea we have is we open up behind this goal because that's an alleyway that goes back out on Pilot to St Elmo's Road, that that boosts the capacity. So you could physically get something like four and a bit thousand in here, but you're limited by by those means. Um, but aside from that, uh, no, we can't cope with the numbers because we don't have the refreshment facilities, we don't have the bar facilities, we don't have the um, uh, toilet facilities, we don't have the disabled toilet facilities, uh, we don't have any of that to cope with crowds anyway, even half the size of Bogner, if we're honest. You know, it, it, it does put us under immense strain. Um, so we, we have to deal with that. Um, uh, things like changing rooms. Right, so we part of our vision is to address the change rooms. If you've ever been in there, they're not the most attractive uh, in the world. Um, they're not the worst, but you know, if, if Adam wants to keep recruiting, you know, young talent, and there's plenty of talent around this area that would still fit under young and regional. They're from Sussex and all sort of borders, but they're playing in the National League or they're playing in National South. If we want them, it's not just about you know Adam and where the team's playing. It's it's things like the facilities. So. We have to address that as well. So that that might be more cosmetic stroke, a bit functional for the first team, but we have to deal with that. The minute we touch those changing rooms, you have to put in place separate changing facilities for female um, officials. So right now we're fine, and I think you saw at the weekend there's a, um, a female lino assistant referee. Uh, the minute we address or refurbish our changes, we have to <coughs> deal with the issue of separate facilities for for females. Um, so there's a bunch of things that that we that mean we can't cope. If we keep getting bigger, you know, we want to do things like hospitality, we want to do things um, like have your shop and, and so on. Um, and again, we've got ideas, but that all takes takes money. We can time. get... And time as well, it takes time. Yeah, I mean, it, it does take time, um, to be honest, but we've time's on our side, we've got all summer, you could easily, if you had the money, you could nail all these things in the summer. Um, but you, need the, you can get um, stadium improvement funding, um, but you've got to be able to match the funding and we, we never quite seem to be able to get ahead enough to say we've got a pot of gold here can we have a bigger pot from the funding <coughs> um, and that's is the that bit it gets it gets more complicated in terms of the the legal entity that's applying for the funding because we're a limited company limited by shares um, and lots of the grants and subsidies and funding for people at the lottery are only applicable to charitable organizations um, so we needed, we've talked about and we almost set up a charity and that allows us to draw down on funds from places like that. You've then got the secondary problem which is how do you get the money from that bank account which is, mm. call it Worthing Charity, into Worthing Football Club Limited. Um, so it's all doable because lots of other clubs do it. Um, but it does get more complicated um, and I think we haven't quite got the operated infrastructure to allow us to deal with some of those little rinky dinks. Um, and if you look at Bogner, for example, Bogner is not a limited company. Bogner is a club, it's an, an, an unincorporated association, which is basically just a couple of people getting together saying we're going to run a club, and that's it. So in that sense, they're not accountable to anybody <coughs> other than themselves. So, so if you've got that set up, you can run lotteries, you can do all sorts of things that we can't do because of our corporate structure. So can I ask two questions? The Go first one, the back, um, facilities. <coughs> What's the position with regards to the what was the bar at the front, which is now obviously used by um, Damn. fitness people? Yeah, so that is on a lease which has um, 10 plus years left to run. Um, so that was that the lease was sold at the point of the takeover in 2015, I think it was. Um, Dan has that for a period of time. We are allowed to, well, not allowed, he doesn't mind us using it um, with certain restrictions on what we can use it for. So the stuff for that, basically. 
Um, the second question has gone completely out of my head. Yeah. Um, was. So <coughs> here we come up. Being in the shop, people stand there and talk and being what? A lot of people have commented to me about why are you not doing the music after the games again? Yeah. I know, it, I know you and I have been down here yeah, before. Yeah. You had a band, and there was your wife and I and me yeah. and my friend. But not on a regular basis, but maybe on a, a monthly. Yeah, basis. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, yeah. So the, I mean, uh, um, Amber and Kaylee have got a load of ideas of things they want to do, not just on a match day, but more broadly around the club. So they're kind of cracking on with various things there. Uh, on a match day, it, it was one of those where you can't win because as many people as we had saying this is great, watching the football coming inside, having a couple of beers, listening to some great music. For every ten that said that, there was another ten saying this is a this is a nightmare. I would watch the game. I want to come in and have a beer and have a chat about the football. I don't want to listen to that racket. You're so you got once a month. Yeah, you could vary. It. I agree. I agree. You've got to do it. It's just something that you yeah, yeah. would be much standing there and talking about. And like the quiz that we had the other week, that went down quite well, yeah. but not on a regular thing. Yeah, and that, when we spoke to Amber about taking on that role, you know, one of, one of the, there was reasons why Amber left and there's reasons why Amber came back. And one of the reasons why she came back was because she's got free reign to drive the club forward and do so much that makes this a valuable asset. You know, <laughs> um, and, that, and that brings this place to life. So I, I know Amber, you know, Abe assisted by Kaylee, who's down there somewhere. There she is. Um, they've got loads of ideas of things that they want to do to, to bring all that to life again. Um, on a match days, I think it's great. Maybe we just do it, you know, intermittently, and we do it every now and again. Once a month or something. Yeah. To be fair, for stuff like that to be successful, you want it non-match days and on regular first Tuesday every month, whatever. Yeah. Because quiz people go around the quiz. Yeah. yeah they, they do it regularly, don't they? So you yeah, kind of do exactly. it need a bit of regularity to yeah. it, but not on a match day, like you said, yeah. for exactly the same reason. Yeah. And I've remembered my other question. So, um, in terms of um, the charity thing, yeah. and the limited couple of things, I know you can't do that, but could the support association go down that route and leap that way, they became a charity. Uh, yes, so what the um, what the supporters, are, I think we're meeting, Stu and I are going to talk to the Supporters Association soon, I think. Um, but absolutely yes, and it, it doesn't have to be the Supporters Association, anybody could do it. No, but there's um, already a group of people there. Exactly, there. exactly. So yeah. there's, for example, one of the models is, yeah, one of the models is that the Supporters Association, um, which is an unincorporated association, could set itself up either as a charity or it could just carry on as it is now um, but it could um, it could for example run its own lottery yeah. and allow Worthing Football Club to apply for grants from that lottery funded pot to do something like provide coaching to the kids now providing coaching to the kids might we might the club might say you know can we have five thousand pound a year to provide coaching to kids right? <coughs> and what that does actually it takes five thousand pound off our wage bill um, and I was talked to some guys in um, sort of national level rugby and they do a lot of that in rugby where you've got um, businesses and supporters have got together and they formed a diamond club or some other sort of club yeah. and they just charge a monthly hundred pound of hundred pound a month per business and they get a hundred members and they exist purely as a bunch of mates who love the rugby club but what they do is that hundred pound a month um, they fund it into the club by allowing the club to make applications for whatever right? Um, and then what the club then does is it gives that those diamond club members um, unique access to the club so you might have a, a dinner every couple of months with just the players and the diamond club members so you do things like that to make them feel sort of special but it's a bunch of people getting together to say we'd like to raise funds to funnel it into the football club and do it you know legally without you know some of the tax issues that you get you know, and hate you know John HMRC is our second biggest cost yeah. the amount of money we funnel out to HMRC is just criminal frankly um, and that's because we're a limited company so we're subject to all sorts of taxes and VAT and goodness knows what I don't think Adam's had a question yet I just like a Yorkshire accent saying rugby to be fair <laughs> rugby <laughs> excellent so, Rug so much better rugby league rugby rugby, rugby. 
What about KP, Adam? Is he going to stay here after uh, Lucas is back? Ah, Clayton. Um, well, I couldn't say no. No, he's exactly, yeah. <laughs> He's a good Steve, that's why it's yeah, yeah. a player. Yeah. No, yeah, something for us to look at. Obviously, um, Lucas has been out in Brazil. Um, he's really sort of upped his uh, rehab. He's doing twice, um, two two days um, working on his on his on his arm, and, and his rehab has really propelled his his rehab recovery time. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's something to look at, really. Um, obviously. We got an unbelievable goalkeeper um, under contract at this club, and we've been lucky enough to sort of bring Clayton in as well. So it's a it's a um, decision to be made really closer to the time. But I think it'd be very hard to keep two keepers of their calibre yeah. at, at the yeah. football club. Um, you know, so we've got to sort of. Well, yeah, I'll make a decision on that. But. From the supporters' point of view, everyone. <coughs> was a bit wary when Lucas went out and the guy he brought in, I, I think, the person himself, I think he has really fitted in yeah. after a couple of shaky starts. Yeah. Not very good on the high balls, but it, he's, yeah. No, I see, yeah, I think there's, there's pros and cons and he, for both he hasn't got Lucas's way of running down the clock either. We won't have to worry about that soon, though, because you know we're never ahead in games, are we, at the moment? So uh, <laughs> oh, okay. you're kicking it. I was going there for someone else did. No, it's, it's obviously really, really pleased with you know our recruitment there. Um, he's done really well, but like I say, he, both of them will want to play regular regular football so it's gonna be a tough one to keep them both both happy. Uh, like I say I think we we'll see Lucas back available to us by the end of this month. Um, he's really progressing really nicely. He probably won't find a better penalty saver. Oh, definitely not. But anywhere in football than Clay to like we've built a really good rapport as well with players and fans like He'll come and chat to us after games and that, and yeah. he loves being here. And that's great. That's all you can ask for. Really. I think I think a lot, of, a lot of our players will do that. It's part of our sort of culture and what we create here. Really, we, we know how special our fan base is, and I've got to be honest with you, when I speak to players, um, you know, it's, it's how I sell the players. You know, to come play here, they don't want to come and play for me because. None of them want to come down to Hastings, quite frankly. So, uh, you know, it's it's it's, 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 yeah, uh, it's the yeah, but it's the fan base and the, the facilities is the big seller when I when I speak to players. Um, you know, so they know that that's part of what we do here and part of the DNA is to integrate the fans into everything we do. I like the players to come in and have a drink in the <coughs> bar afterwards to speak to the to the fans. Um, I find it quite hard myself after the defeat, <laughs> yeah, we'll get better at that, but it's all only because passion's so high really, but yes, yeah, I think it's part of what we do, part of our culture that we create that they do integrate so well. And if you did yourself a big disservice there in saying they don't play for you, because going back to the bad old days, they did play for you, because yeah, we true. had no money and we had no yeah. facilities, and they all stayed, because I was here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So they did play for you, mate. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was I was a pest with David all summer to be honest with you. Every other day I was contacting him and seeing what's going on and you know just, yeah, yeah, well, I was exactly like that. Exactly like that. I had like that in the summer and it wouldn't just be David this you know, I'm really sort of <coughs> pleased to talk about Clayton and recruitment and stuff like that, but you know, some of the players that we've been lucky enough to, to recruit, um, I think we're seeing them at the early stages. So imagine these, these players, um, you know, when they get 50 games, like Ricky and Danny Barker with 50 games of this level under their belt, you know, how good they, they could be. Um, you know, there's just two names ruled off, but, you know, there's a whole host. Um, you know, I don't think it's in the best of Will Miles, he's still a young player. Um, Joel Colbran and um, really young as well. Uh, obviously, Alfie. Mm. You know, so there's some real exciting sort of players within our ranks. Um, it has been frustrating getting um, them all out on the pitch, but like I say, it's part and parcel of football. No one um, knows 
better than me, what it's like to be out when you're injured. You know, it's the worst thing as a footballer. Um, you want to be out there playing and it's the same with all our, our players, they're doing their utmost to get back out on that pitch. The effort from the top rubs off though and it is visible and we do appreciate what you're doing. So as long as you know that from the fans, we support you one of the Obviously, the pressure was run high and stuff like that. I was a bit frustrated with a long section long of a song coming out because if there's one team that don't play long ball, I believe it's my team, and <laughs> I hate to go and watch a team that does that. Um, you know, I was I was asking Danny in particular to play those diagonal balls, and on the highlights, I think we got in twice on a diagonal ball. Yeah. So it's not a case of lumping it long, and each game comes up with different challenges. <clears throat> I think that we've we found that this year we've. Um, testament to the, to the players that we've got. Um, teams come here and give us the utmost respect and make it hard for us and you know you just got to look at the reaction of the away team when they do pick up three points here. It's like they have won the FA Cup uh, and I think that's testament to um, the team they're up against. Um, you know they come and, and make it hard for us and you know this, this league there's, there's no easy game. It's Saturday and then we go to White Oak on, on Tuesday like three games next week. Two local derbies in there, and one difficult test at Margate. There's, there's no game where you go well, that's a guaranteed, um, guaranteed victory, and it's a bit like the championship. I think anyone can go on a run of winning games, anyone can go on a run of losing games. It's how tight the the league is, in particular this year, because you haven't got a Dunwich or Billericay, in my opinion. Um, maybe Dorking would be the exception, but they're sort of finding their feet. Um, but I honestly believe with our group of players that we've got, we can. Be competitive, and it's down to a little bit, a little bit of luck on the day. Don't think we got that at Burgess Hill. Um, thought it was a foul, the first goal on Clayton that you get on another day. I don't know if anyone slowed it down like I have, but you see Gary sort of make contact with him before he, he does the ball. But um, you know, one thing that we we do work on hard here is analysing. Obviously, with Louis, great work that he does. You know, we get the footage back really quickly, um, so we can analyse it and. The players are learning from that all the time. I'm not saying average age is 21. You're not going to have to finish start for. Um, and I hold my hands up myself. 34. So that because a couple of days to say that. Uh, but you know, I'm not the finish start for 34. I haven't got 20 years of managerial experience under my belt like some of the other managers have at this league. But one thing we are, I think, is honest, and we'll try and work as hard as we can to keep on improving. 100%. You mentioned earlier passion from high and do at times natural in football. Um, but everyone's striving for the same thing. Yeah, of course we are. Yeah, and no, honestly, no one uh, gets more frustrated when I see. Yeah, you know, I want to be entertained. I want to see entertaining football. So when we, for instance, Saturday, we have a lot of the ball, but we didn't work their goalkeeper enough. We got a big contingent behind the goal, and that's part of my talk to the players. You know, we've got to go and entertain these fans. We want them to keep coming back. We want to keep playing in front of these fans. We've got to entertain them, and um, our formations had to change a lot this year because. You know, constantly trying to find a way to bring you guys entertaining football that you want to come and watch. Um, so get three points to the yeah, exactly. Uh, on, that, on that point, there was no balance there between that and, and the result, in your opinion, because yeah. the players and the local thing is, is is what we've always tried for. I know that from the yeah. when I was here, but should there be? that ugly plan B type Yeah, if you've scenario. got, I think you can do that if you've got um, a budget that allows you to go and get experienced players. So if you've got 11 Aaron Racines, he's gone now, so I'll speak back. You've got 11, <laughs> you've got 11 Aaron Racines in your team with this kind of experience that he's got, then obviously you're looking for results. Um, but we're not in a position to do that. And part of our DNA and our culture, and I believe that, you know, you talked about Jasper already, um, you know, you've got to look at our 14, 15, 60s, there's some great talent coming through there as well. And nothing to give me sort of greater pleasure to see them come and play in the first team as well. I mean, some of our under 16s uh, are on the coach and come to away games. They're really bought into everything we try and do at the club. And like, really proud of them, seeing them come and watch and, and learn. And they are learning all the time. Um, but we're not in a position to go and get experienced players throughout our ranks. Um, you know, so with that, there is going to be a little bit. Of, you know, no one wants the three points more than me on a Saturday, and same with the players. Um, but I think if anything comes out of this meeting, it'll be the case of you know we are still very young, we are still learning and improving, and um, that is going to show in our results from time to time. I think there's a there's a bigger star here as well, which is 
you have to believe in something, you have to have a passion. We could win this league by doing what Billy Ricky did. We probably wouldn't spend 25 grand a week, but we could probably name five players now that if we said to Adam, there's another five grand a week, or 10 grand a week, or seven grand a week, you could go and get those five players and we'd probably win the league. I'm pretty certain we could do that with some of the players that we know about. Do we want to do it that way? Does that mean we believe in anything? Would it, it would be exciting for the next couple of months and it'd be exciting to try and win the league. Then it would be dead again because they would then sod off and go to the next club that will pay the 10 grand or whatever it might well be. And it's, and, and maybe I'm an idealist or an optimist, but I think you have to believe in something. You have to have a passion about something. And if you fail, all right, at least you fail. But you had a passion and a, you try to do something the right way. And it's, it's one of the reasons why some of you might know, I, I just came completely off social media because I got sick and tired of reading the, the sort of crap that's out there. And when you put yourself up as a club, you're there to be shot at, I get that completely. And in the last couple of months, we've been battered left, right and centre. Most of it's been public on, you know, by Lewis and Burgess Hill and Bogner. And you think, well, you know, why bother? But actually, there's a lot more stuff that, behind the scenes that isn't quite so public. And you think, well, do you know what? It would be easy to get distracted and think, all right, well, I'm hacked off because we've lost four on the trot. So let's go and get on Adam's case and say, what are we going to do about it? You know, here's another couple of grand. Let's go and get that player and you know, all that player. Let's go and chase the result. And do you know what? That's just the wrong thing to do. And I, and I, I personally just do not believe in that. Um, I've got, a, and I think Adam's the same. It's, it's, it's about having a, a dream and a vision to do something differently that's here for the long term. So I would, you know, if we don't get promoted this year, so what? Um, this next year, and I'd, I'd be pretty convinced we'd get it next year. But if we can still keep producing a team that is younger and it's embedded in this region and it has an affinity with people here and they want to play for Worthing. When you hear people go on trial at a Premiership Club and they come back and say, I didn't enjoy it, I'd rather play for Worthing, then we're doing something right. And some of that is Adam to my left, but actually some of it is because of more of what we're doing. So I, I, from my view, you have to believe in something and you have to have a passion for something. And, and I think social media was such a big distraction. That's why I dropped it and said, no, there's a danger that, that I and we lose focus. You can have the fights with the fools from Lewis and Bogner and Burgess Hill, right? But if you said to any of those people out there, would you rather have a thousand average home crowd? Would you rather have the facilities we've got? Would you rather have Adam Hinchwood as your manager? Would you rather have the academy and the youth teams that we've got? Would you rather have all these things? Every one of them would say, oh, I wish we had all of that. Um, so I think it's, it's easy to get distracted by chasing a result and chasing a, a, a shorter term thing, but that's, you know, throwing a, a ton of money at it, it just isn't a passion. <coughs> it's just not a dream. Well, I'm sure Dean will elaborate better than I can, but rewind sort of three, four, five years where we're where and where we are not now. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of that was, was built on, you know, we did, it, we was forced maybe a little bit more so than John you know, back us up on this. To, we had to go and get the Will Hemmings and the Omars that, you know, were untried and tested, um, and chuck them all together because I believed in them as players and the way we wanted to play. Um, you know, I remember one of the game, first games that come in, and Gavin Gordon scored two goals and we won the game against Chipstead at home, um, and then I had to release him because I brought Omar in. Um, you know, some tough sort of decisions like that, but you know, in the long term, you're seeing Omar, and I think nothing gives you know supporters and anyone associated with this club to see Omar represent Lebanon in the Asia Cup or whatever that he's going to be doing this month. Um, you know, and I think he's fully behind everything and knows that he got his grounding from here. Jordan Maguire Drew's gone on to Leighton, Leighton Orient. He'll remember his time having leave from Worthing and. When I mes messaged him, he's you know wishing us all the best for the future. So um, I think that's the beauty of it: the fact that you bring, you brought those players in, no one knew them, and they've all gone on here and they're stars. Yeah. And to, to the fans, they're the players that's at the start. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll forever be remembered as football clubs yeah. for that reason. Yeah. So. We, I, I think now the way we're moving, though, we've got to just get the balance right. So we don't want to be losing our players to. You know, the Eastbourne Boroughs and that in the world no more. We want to sort of be, if we're losing them, it's to, like, say, National League clubs. And even that over time, you know, we don't want to be losing them to them. It's got to be the Championship, League One, League Two. And, you know, that that um, that, that full-time football, it, it, as a league footballer, has got to be the, the ambition for these players. Um, but we are going to get, you know, you, you see the quality in there. And, 
we are going to get more and more that go on and to bigger and better things. And um, you know, if, we if the players do go to bigger sides, is there any benefit to the club or are they? Uh, unless you sort of give them under contract, but then even that, say for instance, um, there was under contract and um, you know, a League One side come in and said we want to give this lad an opportunity. You know, I don't think we're in a position to demand a fee where that boy is, can't go and fulfil his dream. Oh, no, no, no. Um, but at the same time, you know, we don't want to be seen as this club where people can just go here, yeah, we're taking him for nothing, we're taking him for nothing and you know we've got we've got to look after ourselves ultimately we we're giving them a commitment of a contract when no other club is looking to do that. Um you know so we've got to look after ourselves but at the same time we don't want to price these lads out of their dream ultimately to to, to get into the football league and, and be full time full time footballers. But as you mentioned earlier for Luca and Brighton, do we get any conversation because of his age? He because of his age he's in full time education so you can't sort of put him on the contract I believe that's a, one of the rule ins but like oh you'd like to think with Brighton that they look after us. Um, or yeah. <laughs> they did offer just just get a bit of a bit bit of a relationship. Like you want if you if we're in need of a couple of lone players and we can afford them or a pre-season game, we like to think that they'd look after you in that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, it's good. It's good, but like I say, it's, but again, there would be a fee, but we wouldn't. No, that's right. But there's again, there's a, a bigger story to the Luca, because if you rewind when we started the academy um, last year, it was a real struggle to get the players to come in and commit, because we've nev never done it before, so it was the first time round. Um, and you know, a lot of these, Luca, for example, is a very intelligent lad. So his parents would say, "Why would I send him to Worthing Football Club in an unproven education program when I could send him to somewhere else?" Um, but you know, Luca's a great footballer, but he was a uh, a footballer with a reputation um, as well around the local sort of youth setup. So getting uh, people like Luca in and, and James and a couple of others, it, it was a real big achievement in terms of setting the standard. And now that we've had our first year, and it's proven to the outside world actually. Those guys have come in cold, and now look at them. You know they're, they're right at the top of the National Alliance League under 19s, and we're about to play you know, teams like Bognor and, and so on. So it's just big as the game that was, um, whatever it was, two weeks ago. You know there's another one that's going to come up soon with the, the under 19s. So next time round, and we've got the second trial and presentation next Monday, I think it is. Um, we've actually got a story to tell now because we've got the great players that Luca have come in, and Luca's parents admitted it and said as much. He progressed hugely by being part of Worthing Football Club um, and what he learned from Adam and the coaches and the setup, and that enabled him, that raised his profile. So, other players of that ilk who are now 15, 16, 17 are going to say, Do you know what? I'd rather be at Worthing. Whereas last year they might have said, I think I'll go to Worthing College or I think I'll go to somewhere else. Now they want to be part of Worthing. So, that's part of the longer term building the pipeline. Yeah. I think the beauty of it as well is like his parents come to watch the first team games. Yeah, they speak to David yeah. and his dad, and they just love it around yeah. the club. And well, the parents buy into that to the whole culture yeah. of this club. Um, and you that's know, what you want because you've got more support. Yeah. I think I think if I could say anything, it would be to the parents of our 14, 15, 16 do come and buy into it because I think the ones that have done that have improved probably in a rapid rate of knots than the others, to be honest because um, they buy into the whole culture and you know someone that's coming to watch a game at Epsfleet uh, in two years time or a year's time is then playing out there what kind of passion is he going to have to if he scores that winning goal he's going to be straight in the fans and so, I mean I think that's the kind of passion that you want yeah. from a local local team and um, we set up our 14s, 15s, 16s ultimately to provide and the education programme to provide a pathway to our first team so if we do go and get a load of lads from London um, and pay them mega bucks. How is that going to look on the likes of Jasper, for instance, who's tearing it up in the educational program? He's going to look at it and go, "This is not what I sort of signed up for and bought into." Um, so I think we've got to stick true to our, our DNA and, and how and we. And they care. They're passionate. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll come to away games. He, <coughs> exactly. He he will get his opportunity, and um, you know, just the time and thing with him. But he's chomping a bit like a lot of them are. This. Some real talented 16-year-olds that um, just for instance, uh, the Sussex under-18 team has eight representatives from Worthing Football Club in it, and that's what I want to be the norm moving forward. And I'm really proud of that, and you know I want that to be the norm moving forward.
And the England team's got three. England colleges team. Three were the players. Just on that, and you mentioned about admin earlier, so what's the admin and the relationship thing between 40, 50, 60 the academy and the club? Is there a link? Is there somebody doing that? Yeah, it's all tied in. over and yeah. making sure that the parents can come and yep. get in and Absolutely right. all that. Yeah, so we've got, it, 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 it's all integrated <laughs> in, in a number of ways. So we have, so you know, Adam isn't just the first team manager. Adam's official role in the club is, is first team and academy manager. So Adam has oversight of everything, not just the first team, but the academy. Um, so the values that we that are run that the first team are run by are carried straight into the academy and the youth teams. Um, whether that's behavioural traits that you want and the way people conduct themselves, <coughs> or whether it's the way that the football is played, that's continuous all the way throughout. So that's that point of contact. From an administrative and a secretarial point of view, then um, Vic uh, Suds uh, is the youth and academy secretary. So she works very closely with Vaz, who is the club secretary, and they keep everything nice and tight. Um, you've got. Um, You've got Steve and we've got Cam, um, Aaron gets involved and we've also got uh, uh, Barnsley and Andy uh, as well as Steve r uh, managing the three sides, um, Cam, Adam and uh, Aaron as coaching on the three youth sides. So each of the youth teams has got a manager and a coach so it's tightly woven all the way throughout the club and it's, a, it's, a, it's why I bang on about the ladies team because I do not want this club to be like most youth clubs out there where it's, it's it's a club name, but there's, there's you know, two dozen, three dozen individual teams who all do their own thing, but operate under one banner. We don't want that. We want one club. Um, so I don't want the ladies off over here and the first team off over here and the three separate youth teams off over there. And there's been a couple of occasions where somebody's gone and done their own thing and they've been reined back in again. I'm told, no, you don't go out and look after yourself. You're part of the club and you behave as part of the club. And it's all, it's, it's all tightly woven in that sense. Obviously, like we've anything to set up mood is stuff we can work on and we'll like our first year of setting up a 14, 15, 16 in an education program but like I say we're learning and honest enough to know that we want to get feedback from the parents and look to improve in any way we can because you know we're not saying we're the finished article and everything's you know there's things that we can improve like that there is anything when you set it up from scratch. I think it's probably 50% of the fines have come from the ladies team. I was just going to say, how does what you just said bring back to the fines? Yeah, I think most have come from the ladies. Doesn't, doesn't, it, it's at odds with what you just said. Yeah, well, it's, there's certain pockets where it's not as tight as it should be, and people have dropped the ball, and people have um, you know, made mistakes uh, around the ladies' team, so that's now been fixed and addressed. Um, we have we've had a few sending offs as well. We've had a few sending offs as well. Yeah. Dirty team. Yeah, we're a dirty team. Long <laughs> ball. Dirty team and long ball. Yeah, yeah. Like Brutal. Um, and then there's been a couple of things where we've um, been forced to sign players at a bit of a distance, like Clay take Clayton for example, and, um, and we've fall foul, fallen foul of the rules that says you have to have live signatures, so electronic signatures are not good enough. So we've fallen foul of that rule a couple of times where we've got the player from say take Clayton, we send in the form, he prints it, signs it, fills it in sends it up, scans it, sends it back to us, we print it, and we sign it and send it to the league. You've got two live signatures and an electronic signature, you're not allowed to do that, it's got to be three live. So there's a couple of times where we've fallen foul of that, which has been ignorance on our part. Um, or incompetence on the league's part. Yeah, true. I, 21st century. I, I, 21st century, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm right with you. You're learning with those stuffs off the pitch as well, I think, you know, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thoughts? What, what do you want more of, less of, different around the club? No, I did until Bob came and me for thirty quid. Bob got bankrupt. Yeah, I did want more goals until Bob came and asked me for thirty quid. Honestly, we spoke earlier about the clubs getting bigger and bigger. Obviously, the fan base is getting bigger as well. And Adam was saying he was getting a bit of grief about long ball and stuff like that. Obviously. The original fan base, who a lot of us are here tonight, and we've been there. I mean, we stuck through, stuck behind Gary Elphick and John Meany through that run right up until the end, never complained. Um, so, obviously, as a lot of these fans have broken pain, might have only just started coming this season. Yeah. Seeing the great starts of the season, see a few bad bits, but that obviously does reflect everybody because we, 
be sucking on what we've stuck behind for a long time yeah. and to have you here is just no, yeah, really I've, amazing. I've, I've, don't get me wrong, nothing, no one gets more frustrated when you see a group of players that we've got and you know, we're not providing more goals or we're not creating enough chances but like I say it's not for a want of trying or anything getting said and there might be times where teams come and press us high so the space is in behind and like I tried to say uh, when I've done the interview with Louis if we don't as a defender if all the game's in front of you and you're pressing then it's easy but so we've got to be able to for instance crane his goal to Oli Pierce you know we worked on that run in between the full back and the centre half um, you know, and great ball and a great bit of, bit of quality um, on the day, but it's, it might be a longer pass that got us that first goal that settled us down. Um, but yeah, we keep we've keep been, on. We've got no reason to mind that nothing uh, at all. Keep, we oh, keep on believing in, in the way we want to, in the way we, we way we work, the way we play. Um, you know, all a couple of a, a bad run of results does is you know make you. Focus and a little bit more on that. That one that we was on that table probably around. I can't remember how, how long it was. But Nine was games. Was it three wins in under John Gale? Oh, at the start of that season. Yeah. Oh, it, it took. It was it, the end of one season, the start of the next one. Yeah. Right? Well, so we went um, on the previous season. We went um, on a run of nine games without a win. I think the win came at most of them away. That's two, right, two yeah. one. Camel's goal. That's it. Camel's off his shin yeah. from forty yards. Yeah. 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 That was. A, that was. And then that. Carried over into the following season when we <coughs> lost the first eight. Right up to the Margate game. That's it. I think that was the first one we, we voiced every pin thing and yeah. gave up. And the first game yeah. was the 16th yeah. game, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That was it. Well, it was actually the 17th game we got our first league win. That was the away game yeah, at Needham, Needham Market. Yeah, yeah we, I think we still had good turnouts home, home and away. Yeah. For all that. Definitely. No one ever gave up. Everyone stuck with it. And yeah. I think that shows the Lord is all of this stuff. Yeah, hundred percent it does, and that's why that strives me on to give you entertaining football and give you, you know, um, winning football. And, but of an entertaining variety would be to what I look to do. Um, obviously, it's not going to be the case. Um, like I say, teams have come and paid us a lot more respect, especially at home. I think that's why away form has probably been better this year. Um, but you know, I've, I've tried to tweak formations, and, and it's all to try and. Give you more goals, give you more shots on target. Um, honestly, no one gets more frustrated when. Take a one here, Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Clean sheets, that's important for us as well. We haven't had enough of them, so um, hopefully, with the big man back soon, we'll make a big difference. solution, though, because John, when we watched EP Saturday. You want to watch him? EP? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, EP didn't come here and you won, so I'm yeah. not allowed. <laughs> there we go. Simple as that. Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm quite superstitious like that, John, so if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll stand that side <laughs> So I'll get my helicopter to go around. Drone. Drone, yeah. Anything else? Stu, very for mate. The job that this, this guy has been, he has not been mentioned. He is. The job he does. The hours he puts in to this football club, I've got to say, is just you know, phenomenal. Let's call it a night, shall we? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'll sleep for more,